I'm Claude Jones, producer of Real Talk, and I'd like to introduce my lovely host, Gail Lewis, for this episode. Thank you very much. Welcome to Real Talk with Claude Jones. I'm your host, Gail Lewis, and with me today, the maven of fashion here in Southeast Queens, none other than Mike Hill. Hi, Mike. I'm well. Thanks for joining me on Real Talk with Claude Jones. Today, we're going to highlight this particular vendor, and we're going to see inside Mike's world of fashion. So come on along and join me for the ride. Hold on, it's Claude Jones and Real Talk. Uh, we're standing here outside of your, your van uh, in Southeast Queens, and thank you so much for joining me on Real Talk, by the way. Um, so I know that you supply clothing, so tell me a little bit about the clothes that you supply. Clothes that we supply is that we pick up stuff that's not in 100% perfect condition, mm -hmm. and we make it perfect. Okay. And then we put it to the Okay. So where do you get the clothes from? You pick them up from? You know, a lot of stuff from different warehouses throughout the city. Right. Uh, stuff shipped in. Okay. Some stuff I pick up. Louder, 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 louder. And louder. And once we get them in, we wean them. Uh huh. Put them in different categories, mm -hmm. and then we present it to those categories. Okay. So what different categories are there? How do you, well, you have, determine? You have, you have uh -huh. some stuff. For instance, this one here is a little bit wrinkled. Okay. So this one comes wrinkled, so we have to make it to where it's pristine, clean. Right. Press it, clean it. Make it, it nice and uh -huh. crisp. Some may have a loose button, so you might tighten that button up. Okay. And others may have something that may, may have a little blemish on it. We have a, little, a lot of noise. we got to be a little bit louder today, Mike, too. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but then you, you repair the buttons. If there are any little holes or anything, you'd repair those. You'd iron right. it out, and any, then any blemish, mm -hmm. okay, and then we and then we present it for sale. Wow. We'll tag it, uh -huh. size it, right. Present it. Okay, sounds at first cool. quality condition. Uh -huh. So, my first thought when I hear hear about all of the work that you do, Mike, is the fact that you are so environmentally friendly. You know. We talk a lot in this country about how much waste we have, how many things we throw away. We have landfills filled with stuff. And what you're doing is really environmentally friendly. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about the clothes, some of the things that you get. More well, men's wear, more mainly, women's? Mainly men's wear, uh -huh. um, but we do have ladies wear. And for instance, we do a lot of ladies winter trench coats. Really? Um, and we do a lot of ladies' uh, blazers as well as men's, mm -hmm. and a lot of ladies' overcoats. Okay, so, so winter we do a coats combination or... of men's overcoats. We do a combination of ladies' overcoats. Mm -hmm. We do a combination of men's and ladies' sport coats right. and jackets and things like that. So okay. that's basically our, our line. You know, that's the way it looks. For this, the way this is the way it comes in. Maybe yeah. missing a button. Yeah. Right, so yeah. A little blemish, and right. then it goes out looking like, like right. this. And this is just beautiful. I mean, yeah. it's recycled clothing at its yeah. best, really. Right. And then this way, it costs a little bit less too. I would assume. Right. It costs a lot less, and the fact that we can purchase it a lot less, right. we can sell it a lot less, and that's how we have a large. Um, uh, I'm going to say follow yeah. of customers uh -huh. who love our stuff. So talk to me about your typical customer. Who's the person who's usually buying this? There's these people who are buying at flea markets, right. street fairs, mm -hmm. uh, street corners. Okay. All my favorite places uh, festivals, to shop, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You know, festivals. So, yeah. Uh -huh. so that's, that's how the market Okay. Yeah. And these people are looking to buy because it's cheaper, because it's good? Why? They're looking to buy because you got a cheap price uh -huh. and you have good quality. Right. That's our model. We, we only pick out the top quality designer items. Yeah. For instance, this is a top quality jacket. It, I mean, and, it feels and, and good. Almost, and everything has top quality made. Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. Right? I can take you downstairs and show you more. 
fence, so this is the top quality men's sport coat. Right, and this has already been tagged knock. and right. ready to go. Ready to go. Right. Wow. That's so you just can micro get, course. You can get something that's uh, That's just me real well. That's really well made. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just been previously worn. Right. Right. And then you put it back together so well too. Right. About how many people do you have putting things back together for you? Uh, about four or five people. Mm -hmm. some some of the stuff we get doesn't need any work, but some of the stuff is already, you know, new items. Right. Some stuff's new stuff items. Stuff that's discontinued, stuff right. that came from the store for, as a sample. Yeah, stock, mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Right. So some of that stuff is just brand new. It just needs to be retagged. Right. Okay. That's All right. Great. So let's go downstairs and let's look at the warehouse. I'm dying to see great. what else is down there. Let's go. Okay. This is the back by the way. section in the building. warehouse that we're standing in right here in Jamaica Queens. It is known as the Ideal Building and it's where they used to make Ideal Toys in this actual building. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was in 1969, the most of the toys that were supplied that Christmas around the world were made right where we're standing. So That's it's correct. it's really a part of history and it's such an honor to be in this building mm -hmm. and to see it repurposed for mm -hmm. something else. So now We've got lots of sports coats. Mm -hmm. So what goes on here? Well, basically, this is the area where we just... This is the finished product, by the way. Okay. Okay, as you can see, this is a very nice jacket. Oh, And it's beautiful. a Giorgio Armani jacket. Mm -hmm. And all we did was put some steam on this mm -hmm. because it came a little wrinkled. Right. It's perfect condition. And this is what our finished product looks like. Beautiful. Okay? We have different items. Mm -hmm. And each item is one of a kind. Right. And basically, our motto is that is only one style to a customer. Mm -hmm. So you never see the same coat twice. <laughs> okay. So we're, another reason to to uh, shop repurposed right there. That's right. <laughs> it has a beautiful Banana Republic coat. Look at still that. It still has the, has price, the tag original on it. price tag on there. And as you can see, mm -hmm. you know it's it's in great quality merchandise. Yeah. Uh, that is repurposed. So these are all ready to go. They've been ready steamed. I see that there's a steamer right back here, mm -hmm. or went to steamer. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't say the name, but there's mm -hmm. a steamer so you make sure you steam all the wrinkles out of everything. That's correct. If it needs to be laundered, I see that you've got mm -hmm. a lot of laundry detergent around mm -hmm. too. That's you correct. spot clean it as well. That's correct. Amazing. Yep. So, um, then uh, explain to me what happens after here. You take them out to those street fairs, to the flea markets to right. everywhere that people would buy them. Right. Mm -hmm. We take them out and, and, and we uh, sell them you know, individually mm -hmm. and we try to get rid of as much as we can on a daily basis and, and it's 
been going very well. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how do you get your clients, the vendors who vend for you? Well, do they usually seek you out? How do they find you? Well, actually, the vendors that work for me, I seek them out. Okay. And how do you do that? We, the, the, well, most mm -hmm. of the vendors are veterans. Mm -hmm. So if you know a veteran, mm -hmm. then most likely they have a license to okay. vend or they can acquire one. Right. Mm -hmm. So once they acquire their license, mm -hmm. then they can get a job selling stuff right. from people like me and yeah. other, other, other vendors, wow. uh, people who seek out other vendors mm -hmm. to sell their products. So this actually, it, it's environmentally friendly and it's also yes. veteran friendly, friendly yes. as well. So, yes. uh, you know. The, yeah, so the, we, we hire a lot of vendors actually. Yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. About in, in Jamaica, Queens or outside of Jamaica, Queens? The whole five everywhere. Yes. Wow. Throughout You're the whole city. everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And about how many pieces of clothing would you say on an average um, day that you go out to your vendors, about how many pieces of clothing do you take with you? Uh, depending on the price point. Um, like for instance, this item is is um like these like items a, right here. Yeah. yeah the, the 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 higher the price point, the, mm -hmm. the the lower the amount. So I would say about 150 jackets every day we go out. Wow. You know so. Mm -hmm. Why why more men's jackets than women's? Is this just well, this the supplier is, to you this, or it, is it? It depends on the season. Okay. So in the winter time we have a lot of ladies raincoats, mm -hmm. a lot of ladies overcoats, mm -hmm. and it, it's mixed. It depends on what what supply we can get. Yeah. At the time, mm -hmm. you know, whatever is high in supply, mm -hmm. that's what we can, that's what we pick up. Okay. You know? And these right here, have they been cleaned? Yeah. Okay. Everything and so is, these are ready to go too. Yeah, you know, everything here is ready to go. This is the finished product, it's not 100% finished, mm -hmm. because the last step to this is to put the tags on. Okay. Yeah. So take me through that process. You uh, take it. Uh, you first you um, survey it. You mm -hmm. determine, I guess, the, the quality, that, right. that would be the brand, right. uh, and exactly, I guess, the condition that it's in. Right, and, mm -hmm. and the condition, which we call grades. Grades, okay. You know, we call mm -hmm. grades, so if it's a better grade, like this is considered better grade. Okay, okay because so of both the condition of the item and also the, the design, the designer? Uh, the, the, not the designer, mm -hmm. particularly the quality okay. of the garment. Mm -hmm. So if it's a good quality coat, Usually is a good design. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it basically goes hand in hand. But sometimes it's, it could be good quality, and it could be a uh, uh, no name designer. Like this is a very good quality sport. Yeah. Coat. It looks like it's just and very well tailored. It's right. got the darts. It's very nice. You know, the stitching is mm -hmm. very tight on this. You know. Right. Even though it's not a designer brand, it right. feels like something that's of a very high quality. Very quality. Yeah. So it would fetch a higher price too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So after that, we tag them, mm -hmm. we size them, and then voila. Okay. Done. And if I was buying from one of your vendors, um, whether at a street fair or a flea market or someplace, what should I look for when I'm buying? Well, if you're buying from us? Uh, no, if I was buying from one of your vendors. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything that me as a shopper that I should be looking for when I'm buying secondhand? Well, what you definitely should be looking for is the condition. First overall all, condition first mm -hmm. and if it's not nicely pressed out mm -hmm. where it's wrinkle free then it's considered not in good condition if it has stains if it has holes it's not in good condition yeah but if the price is right <laughs> then you have to determine if that condition with the price you know a lot of people may say, "Okay, it's a little bit wrinkled, but for the price, I'll take it." Right. But if you if you if you are looking for better goods, and 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 looking to pay whatever price that you want to pay, then you go for whatever is in great condition. Right. No wrinkles, mm -hmm. no holes, no stains. So that's what you basically should be looking for if you want the best, mm -hmm. best item. But if the price is good. I should buy it and send it to the dry cleaner. That's right. Okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean a good yeah. price, and then if I have to get some buttons sewn yeah. on or yeah. get pressed or something, it still it's saves still great. me from going to a major department store and buying it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But this button came off of here. It's still worth every penny. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's a Giorgio money and it's in great condition. So mm -hmm. to sew a button on, it's like 25 cents. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. if that much. Mm -hmm. And you can go buy buttons for for a dollar, ten for a dollar. That's correct. Yeah, so That's correct. definitely worth your investment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything we should look for that is an investment, like a real investment, when we're looking on, on consignment? Some things we should be looking for that might be really high end, that might uh, slip by other shoppers. Um. Well, you mean garment wise, like mm -hmm. like. Like the items we have, yeah. or other items in general. Um, both other items in general, but garments, you know, clothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I do a lot of stuff that I didn't mention. Like we do men's suits. Whole suits, so we pants, do the and, pants uh -huh. and the jacket. Mm -hmm. And those are, are more high-priced items. Mm -hmm. And what a person don't know is that you can get a four hundred dollar suit mm -hmm. from us for a price that you would never. Right. Think of. Yeah. You know, and, and no one would never know you paid such a, a lot small less. amount. Yeah. And then you could easily go and get it tailored. So a great, yes. And dry cleaned, and you're in business mm -hmm. for less than, I'm sure, a quarter of what it would have gone for at retail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, you'd be surprised at stuff that, you know, like you said, environmental friendly. Absolutely. You, I mean, you, everything you're doing here is so you, incredibly environmentally friendly. You'll be surprised what the environment. Holes. Mm -hmm. It holds a lot of stuff that people don't know about mm -hmm. that you can take and repurpose it like? and resell it, mm -hmm. like garments, like yeah. any any type of clothing. Mm -hmm. um, it could be furniture. It could be it could be a whole lot of different items. But we specialize in garments, in clothing, yeah, and clothing, mm -hmm. and things like that. You do know? you do children's clothing at all? No, no, no. because kids just grow so quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, it would seem like buying on consignment for your children, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to a special occasion or something, That's you don't want to spend $100 on yep. a dress for a six-year-old mm -hmm. if you can somehow get it on, on consignment from someone like yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like so much better an idea. Yep. Another great idea is mm -hmm. if someone is getting married, Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. you can rent, like they rent tuxedos, uh -huh. they uh -huh. rent wedding dresses. Really? Even in this business, uh -huh. we can get Secondhand wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. We can get tuxedos. When you when you rent a tuxedo, they clean it. They right. rent it to the next person. Mm -hmm. Wedding dresses too. This business, we can get tuxedos, wedding dresses, and we're thinking about doing a rental business. Really? Okay. So we can rent out mm -hmm. wedding dresses. We can rent out tuxedos mm -hmm. for people getting married. Mm -hmm. And the high end. Things. Yeah, and and yeah. do it at a much discounted prices as opposed to the you know the traditional rental business that's out there today. Mm -hmm. you know? I would even add to that children's formal wear. Children's formal wear. Yeah, it's very yeah. expensive to buy a dress for mm -hmm. one or two time use. Yes. Yeah, if you can mm -hmm. just rent it, yeah. right? Give yeah. it back to you, you guys dry clean it, rent it to the next person. That's right. Right? Around yeah. I especially around this time of year, you mm -hmm. know, there's first communions, there's uh confirmations there's mm -hmm. plenty of weddings there's lots of things that you're going to with your children lots of events and that's a lot of different outfits for your child high-end outfits because mm -hmm. you want your kids to look good on special occasions mm -hmm. so I would say definitely rent some children's wear and we'll be back for that I would go for that yeah. definitely yeah. yeah but what you're doing here like I said before it's just it's so incredibly environmentally and veteran friendly mm -hmm. that kudos to you sir thank you very much so thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining me on claude jones real talk vendor spotlight this has been mike hill and he's just taken us around this part of the warehouse here at the ideal factory well one what once was the ideal factory now mm -hmm. the ideal building here in southeast queens for more information about all of the great work that mike hill does you can contact him how email you can contact me at uh, email, that's michaelhill17 at mail.com. Great. Is there a phone number that you'd like to give? Yeah, I can give you my number. That's uh, 646. I have two numbers. Mm -hmm. But the more number to contact us would be, uh, let me get that new number that we have because we changed our number, 646-597-0409. Okay, and that will get you right here. That'll okay. get me to me, mm -hmm. and uh, you can email me. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So if you're interested in uh, anything that Mike 
does, please uh, go ahead and reach out to him. And for everyone here at Real Talk with Claude Jones, thanks so much for watching, and we're going to see you again real soon. Yo, E. Yo, man, how's it going down there? Well, you know, man, you picked the last straw, man. You know, you stuck down there, man. You stuck down there. You gotta, you gotta get some talent. You gotta try to find. Man, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I'd rather just, you know, give up on it and just come on back to New York, man. I don't, I don't know about Oklahoma. It's just, they don't wanna, they don't wanna, I, I can't help it. I don't know what to do. Yo, no, yo, you, you get, you, you think of something. You're very creative, E. You're very creative. Yo, I gotta go, man. Peace. Alright. Good luck, good luck, man. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Claude Jones, and uh, well, basically you can see, we're trying to find talent in Oklahoma. Me and some partners got together, you know, New York is congested with rappers and singers, but I'm looking for certain individuals in other states. And somehow Oklahoma came up, because we don't know, nobody from Oklahoma really came out really big, I don't know. So, Eric, De Eric Deiraz picked the last straw, so he had got to go to Oklahoma, and he's trying to find talent. So I'm going to see what he can come up with and in our boot camp and see can they, can they really, really cut the must in Oklahoma. Could they really do what they got to do in Oklahoma and find some talent and see what they could do on the boot camp. But through the boot camp, they're easy. There goes a lot of trials and tribulations for the boot camp for the weekend to see are you worthy to be part of the boot camp. So I got some clips here I'm going to let you show, see for yourself. You let me know, audience, how you like the clips you got and do you think you'd be worthy in Oklahoma to go on the boot camp. Just watch the show. Let your finger snap, uh -huh. relax a little nah, nah, bit, nah, nah. get your feet to stand. This is boot camp, boot camp, boot camp, boot camp, boot camp. Your voice is your only instrument, use it, use it. Welcome to Boot Camp, and I'm your host, Eric DeReyes. This is the show that showcases talent from all over the nation, and we start off right here in Oklahoma. So stay with us, and watch what we have in store for you. This is the show where we take some lucky Oklahoman and we put them through hip hop boot camp, music boot camp, and we're gonna send them through a series of tasks and we're gonna give them a prize. $1,000 in cash and $1,000 in studio time. And you get to watch. And we're back. This is Boot Camp. I'm your host, Eric DeReyes. And basically what we do here is we send artists through a series of tests in order to get a ultimate prize. So we scoured Oklahoma looking for talent and basically did some interviews. And this is how it went. Take a look. For another edition of Boot Camp, and I'm here with Crystal. Crystal, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm just fine. Listen, uh, this is a, a competition for Boot Camp for $1,000. Uh, in cash and a thousand dollars in studio time. Tell us a little bit about what you're gonna do to get that prize. I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna dance. Okay. So how long have you uh, been doing this singing and dancing thing? I've been doing it for a pretty couple of years. Home. I haven't really been doing. I'm not a real big stage person, but I do it myself. You think you can give us a little taste of what you can do? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure I can. All right. Well, go ahead. Hit us. Hit a little note for me. <clears throat> It's a little early in the morning for Crystal, I guess. But um, she talked a little bit more, and uh, we kind of went through the interview a couple times because she couldn't quite grasp, you know, the concept of an interview. So here's a little bit more from Crystal. So do you have any recorded songs that we can listen to? Uh, on my phone. No, I mean songs that you recorded. CD. Okay. I said, what do you, what do you mean? Do I have to sing again? No, you can do it in just yes or no question. Okay. All right, I don't know about this candidate, but you know, there's really something about her. 
really something about her. You know, I don't know if she can sing, but I know she's feeling real good right now. Do you have any recordings? Do you have anything recorded? I see that Crystal is having a hard time grasping the concept of an interview. Still. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to get her to sing. Let's see what happens. We're back. Now, after hearing that rendition of whatever song that was, I thought she was going to do something original. I'm kind of thinking Crystal's not going to fare so great in this competition. What do you think? Anyway, it is an interview, so we continue to ask questions. Look what happens next. What's the point of asking all these questions if it's just an interview just for a boot camp? Excuse me? Say that again? Uh, why are you asking all these extra questions, sir? <laughs> because it's an interview, Crystal. Anyway, we're going to move on to our next interview. There's a local guy around here called Bryce, and he uses the studio quite frequently. Uh, he, he does a little rap. He goes by the name Be Easy. So we're going to have an interview with Bryce. And uh, you tell us what you think about Bryce and if he's a good candidate for the show. Check it out. Okay. Uh, where are you from, Bryce? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. How long have you lived here? All my life. Okay. Do you know, uh, do you uh, think that this is a, a place that produces, you know, a lot of talented people uh, worldwide? Talent, yes. As far as hip hop goes, not really. Okay. Um, who's your favorite hip hop artist? Man, there's so many of them. Um, I'd have to say Fifty Cent. Okay. All right. So why do you like Fifty Cent? What's so great about him as a as a rap artist? And uh, do you emulate in any of his works and yours? Um, he's just got that came from nothing, turned out to be something kind of guy. He um. I read his autobiography, really got a lot, a lot of um, come up, and I like that. Um, as far as his work goes, do I use any of it? Do I try to imitate it? Not really. I don't have the same life he did, so I try and stick with my own. But I do um, like a lot of his music and try and help it, or have it help me inspire myself. Okay, that's Bryce. He's a 50 Cent fan, so I'm going to ask him. Who's famous that came out of Oklahoma that he likes? Let's see if he picks another rapper, singer, or what. Check it out. 